Hey, my name's Jack. I'm the founder and former editor-in-chief of Crack.com and the host of the new How Stuff Works comedic news and pop culture podcast, The Daily Zeitgeist. Our goal is to tell you about the ideas that are out there changing the world. We talk politics and news, but we also cover supermarket tabloids, which might seem stupid, but millions of people pass those every day, and they absorb the ideas on the cover whether they want to or not. We also take movies pretty seriously because when we picture something that we haven't experienced, you generally use movies. You probably picture Terminator 2 when picturing a nuclear explosion, even though that's not actually what they'd look like. Anyways, we're trying to take the temperature of what's affecting the national shared consciousness, uh, which sounds a little more hippie-ish than we actually are. But uh, fair warning, guys, some of the content can get a little edgy, so not for young years, but trust us, it's all in good fun. Uh, so go to Apple Podcasts and listen and subscribe to The Daily Zeitgeist. It's very good, is our catchphrase. We're kind of workshopping it. This is the Dan Lebator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Dante Jones joins us in one hour to get grilled, interrogated about this story involving Coach K throwing a flaming spear in the locker room towards some wet towels, <laughs> missing them, and setting the wall on fire. We finally get some answers. Finally, 11 o'clock <laughs> Eastern. Reese Davis is going to join us at 1130 to talk about some college football. And speaking of college football, what is happening at Tennessee is delightful. They are going to stumble and bumble their way into a good hire if Mike Leach ends up there. But I just love, you know, if you've been listening to this program for a while, that I have an uneasy relationship with college football. I love college football. I love watching it. But every time I'm watching it, I'm reminding the, the, that the adults are making the money on literally the bodies of kids. Right. And so while it's fun and great on Saturdays, it's just reeking with inconsistencies and injustices because it's professional football disguised as amateur football so you get to a point where mike leach who's got some pretty questionable things in his past that have ended up with him being at an outpost trying to resurrect his career because he's a little bit crazy and i'm here for whatever it is mike leach, mike leach wants to do at any big program because he's fun and interesting he doesn't care he's confident and i'd like to see him in the sec with the talent of sec athletes to see if all those bogus uh, teams of him and Kingsbury with none of their defense, if any of that stuff can work with the athletes in the SEC. Right, it'd be kind of fun, but he is now their seventh guy. He is the seventh guy they have interviewed right. for this job. Everyone is using Tennessee, all the coaches and all the agents, the dirtiest side of college football. You're yes. seeing it come forth now as everyone buries Tennessee with phone calls trying to get their guy hired or use their guy Use that school as leverage. Oh, they're just using Tennessee for leverage. Hey, I'm interested in Tennessee. Tennessee's interested in me, and I want to raise at the you know at the school that I'm currently at. And I'm proud of all these coaches. I am a tremendous job by Mike Gundy. Just give the appearance that you're interested in Tennessee, and you're really not. And you get a big fat raise, and then you tweet out "Cowboy for Life." It's a good job by him. Does it bother you at all? In keeping with my college football screen screeds uh do you know what the show cause penalty is do you have any familiar familiarity with the ncaa's show cause penalty what it means i don't expect you to i think a lot of people have heard of it without knowing what it is but basically i'm one of those people basically it's a lot of people but basically it's you have to go before the NCAA if you've been hit with a show cause penalty and you have to prove to them through something that feels like litigation or arbitration, you have to prove to them that your coach deserves to work in the NCAA. You have to prove you have to show cause that you're hiring him, that you have you have to make an argument on behalf of hiring him because uh, Pete Carroll got this after the USC stuff. You're basically banned from college football, and if somebody wants to hire you back, they have to make the argument on your behalf in a way that it nobody want no coach wants that penalty. But what I was about to tell you about it, and just what a crock this entire system is. Do you know who has one of those? Who? Oh. Chip Kelly. Nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares about everything that was going on in Oregon that got, what was it? What did they get stripped at Oregon? They got like stripped with games and there was money from boosters and, and Chip Kelly got hit with one of those when he went to the Eagles. Mm hmm. And, and he's right back at no, it. Not only is he right back at it, he's <laughs> leveraging Florida to get more money from, 
from UCLA. <laughs> yeah. Like, and does that bother anybody? Like, he's, no. it, it doesn't, right? No, it does not bother anyone. <laughs> but that's why it's professional football. Like, that's why it's professional. Think about what I'm saying is routinely around amateurism. You got to go and convince a board that your guy is worthy of being a coach in their prestigious, corrupt and entire ecosystem. I had no idea this happened. The NCAA gave Chip Kelly an 18-month show cause penalty for failure to monitor his Oregon program. But that's what I'm saying. None of this stuff matters. Like, you've got an institution that nobody respects administering penalties that don't mean anything, and comes time to get a coach, Tennessee's bumbling around and everyone's using them as leverage because these guys and their agents are piranhas. (laughs) <laughs> and you got Chip Kelly, and none of the nothing, nothing about amateurism actually matters except making sure the kids stay broke. <laughs> right, it's the only thing they care. That's the only consistent <laughs> thing. Like you don't care that your higher educators have to go before people and basically on a knee genuflect and explain why they're worthy of being in your club after being expelled from it. I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what don't pay those kids though can, man okay but can i ask you a question what what teeth does the ncaa actually have when this is the place that we're in when look i don't know what's true with mike leak mike leak mike leach had a back and forth with this company craig james got fired i don't even know any of the details i don't know as many of the details as i need to about whether mike leach was right there or espn was right there uh but regardless there was a controversy involving whether or not mike leach was locking the son of craig james in a shed of some sort yes that was the controversy now, at now, the time. Yes. So it got him gone from Texas Tech and made him hard to hire for a while, which is how, like, this was the, this guy was the, the offensive genius, right. made him hard to hire, which is why he is now at Washington State. Correct. Where he's only 38 and 37, by the way, but Tennessee is desperate right now. Craig James announced that he was leaving ESPN to run for Senate. Okay. Reg- okay. Again, I said on the front end, I don't have all the details on that story. I'm not interested in all the details on that story. I just know that Mike Leach for a while got gone from Texas Tech and ended up like in outposts when he was a coveted candidate. A, because he's a little bit crazy. B, because he had some stuff on his resume that people didn't want to bring onto their campus. But just in terms of publicity. And I know Mike Leach has fought all that and has written in books or a book that he didn't, uh, that he was not in the wrong on any of that. But I just watch what's happening with some of this stuff, Stugatz, and it makes me uncomfortable. Like you, I, it makes me uncomfortable that you're proud of these coaches for being assassin businessmen in something that is not supposed to be a business, Stugatz. Like that, they're able to oh, do no, this. It's a business for them. Though, I know, Dan. Those but are the it's, rules. I know, but it's not supposed to be a business. They keep telling us this isn't a business. That's how the kids stay broke. Right. I mean, listen. I, that's I, how. That's how the. That's how the adults keep getting all the money. Because the money's there, it's just the coaches are getting all of it. You've heard me for years say, I, I can't stand the coaching fraternity, especially at the college level, and these guys should be wearing ski masks, and I think they all have an annual you know, kind of gala where they get together and they just laugh because they're just taking everyone for a ride. I think it's ridiculous, but it is the business, and they make the rules, and they're just... They're doing bit. They're doing what anyone would do in that situation. I, okay, but you understand why it would make me uncomfortable that there's a big giant business running atop of all of this, where where this kind of stuff is present. You can't say that what I'm doing. You're allowed to not judge it if you like, but you can't say that what I'm saying doesn't feel a little unseemly. That all of it, it might be business. You might file it under business as a rationalization, or maybe you like to do unseemly business, but you can't argue against what I'm saying, which is everything that I'm putting in front of you. You're like, ooh. Come on, come on. Yeah, I'm not going to argue it. It's gross. It's absolutely gross. Well, what else is like this, though? It Porn? Like, what? I don't know. Is college football second only to porn in terms of what we will put aside for our enjoyment? Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is college football second only to porn huh. in terms of what we will put aside of our moralities just to get our pleasure? What what else what else would you put up there? NFL football's third, considering what it does to these people's bodies. So football it's in general, right up there. Yeah, football. Yeah. I put the injustice of college football slightly ahead of me not caring what's happening to it, these guys' brains. It can't be slightly because my ahead. fantasy team needs a win. Yeah, but at least those guys are getting paid millions of dollars for their pain. I think that's well. That point. well, that's no. one of the things that makes me crazy when the <laughs> University of Miami has a receiver that is clearly a pro and they are running him into the ground all season, and and you don't know who's taking shots in college. 
to play through injuries. You don't, and, and you don't know which doctors and coaches are looking to protect their jobs by getting the star player on the field while risking his future. Like all that stuff feels awful. And I know the default is they make millions and millions of dollars. No, they don't. Not these players that are getting CTE. Several times, several times I read about football players that have CTE. I've never heard the name. I'm hearing the name for the first time. Mm-hmm. So Dante Jones will join us at 11 o'clock, and Reese Davis will join us at 11.30 Eastern. You think Mike Leach cares that he's, like, the seventh or eighth guy? Like, it took him a while to get to Mike Leach? Well, Mike Leach is a curious... First of all, do you think he's going to get it? Because I'm here for it. I would, I'd like to see Mike Leach coaching Tennessee, but I remember when he was up for the Miami job, There, he doesn't interview well because he's... Because he's got a pirate in his office and he's kind of crazy. Yeah, he's like, a kook. He doesn't like something happens with the interviews. But if I were Tennessee, stumbling around where you get and you get Gundy a bonus at Oklahoma State, you get the NC State coach. NC State didn't even want to keep him, and that guy's like, if I could just parlay this into another year on this job, I'm going to parlay this Tennessee job into NC State giving me a little more. I never really got why he was in Washington State, understanding the program, and he had a bit of a tarnish on him, so he needed to rebuild his his, uh, his good name. But that high-powered offense in an environment that's always rainy just doesn't make sense. There are now reports that John Curry, the AD, has been fired. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN Radio is presented by Progress. Well, John, <laughs> the end of John Curry's career has been a real disaster. And I should give credit there to uh, Wes Rucker, who is a senior writer at Go Vols 247. Okay, so we haven't independently verified this as a. Uh, no, wait a minute. He's got a blue energy. check mark, man. Uh, that's okay. not how this Don't works. Don't ever do I'm, that again. I'm just saying there were reports. Okay, uh, you, you didn't say there were reports. You just did. ESPN doesn't report stuff that way. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I felt like I had to get someone credit there. I don't. I know, but when credit. you gave them credit, I realized it wasn't the New York Times, and I was like, "Oh, that doesn't have any credibility just because it's a blue check mark." Your journalist, your journalistic principles are total disaster. Uh, it's got a check mark. I How mean, many followers does he have? Hold on, let me. I'm check. not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying you have to put the responsibility of this on somebody. He's not the only one tweeting it. But hold on, I'll tell you how many followers he has. Hold on, because if this is like four, he has sixty-two thousand followers. Feeling a little bit better about it. I was hoping for like nine. Yeah, me too. I was hoping for <laughs> nine and an egg because Stugatz didn't make that distinction. Stugatz, it comes across his timeline. He's just reporting it. No, no, no. I got it from a text, and then I Googled it, and then I clicked on that guy's Twitter, and that's how I got the news. He only, uh, he only has two likes. It's weird. Oh, he's got three now. It's a little weird, right? I mean, three likes. How many likes do you have? I don't know even what you're talking about. I have 7,000 likes. You like something, you're going to read it later on because you don't have the time to read it then, and I have 7,000 of them. 7,000 things I will never get around to reading. Don Libertard. This is the Nature Boy Ric Flair, 16 times your world heavyweight champion. Stugatz. The limousine riding, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, jet flying, son of a gun. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Boy, Dan Libertard. Woo! This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We got a lot of things to get to. Mike Ryan is getting weird texts from his father. I forgot to get to that yesterday. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Stugats just told everyone here that he fell asleep during Book of Mormon. I did. Book of Mormon is, is blasphemous, but it's great. Is it the South Park guys that did it? Yeah, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. Snooze fest. I'm surprised that you fell asleep during that. It's playing in Miami. Um, man, Book of Mormon. Guillermo, put it on the poll because I've fallen asleep during Phantom of the Opera. That happened to me. I went on a date one time, ended up at like some place that was very not me, and I ended up uh, falling asleep in the chair during Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> and I fell asleep at O, oh, but that's because Vegas one right all right well but that's kind of what happened to me at, at Phantom of the Opera. well i went to see <laughs> just life one yeah just whatever the evening was before that one i went to see book of mormon in new york city and um with my wife and my kids and new york city had won the night before so i just i fell asleep like i just but and, and there's something about a theater that just makes you want to go to sleep it is dark especially on broadway the the seats are very comfortable yeah we'll put it on the poll is there something about theater that makes you want to go to sleep is it being in a theater? Being in a theater? So what ESPN has confirmed that the athletic director for Tennessee has been fired. What a dumpster fire. He lasted how long? Dumpster a fired. A year. Uh. <laughs> dumpster fired. 
Um, the official way that they're spinning this is parted ways. <laughs> okay. Like, I mean, how how do you botch that many things in a year? I mean, he was fired. Keep in mind, Tennessee's looking for a coach, and all they've brought to their campus is shame after shame. Well, he didn't technically. He didn't botch anything. He hired the guy he wanted to hire. He had a relationship with Greg Schiano. It was the hundred or so fans that ended up getting him fired because they rejected well, but, that hire. Oh, yeah, but he botched it by trying to hire Greg Schiano. <laughs> okay, but, but that was his, it's big, his job to that, make the that, hire. That though. was I know, but that's where he botched it. And so, if you weren't following any of the details after that, what ended up happening is Tennessee, which needs a coach not only doesn't have a coach, but took a coach that nobody wanted, felt the shame of having taken that coach. hundred people protested, drive, uh, you know, drawing pedophilia, Sandusky, and uh, his links to the Penn State program and the biggest scandal in the history of sports. And so the transaction becomes, I need a coach, I don't have a coach, I brought the wrong coach, I have to now let go of the wrong coach, that creates an embarrassment, also I may have to pay the coach a buyout, also now I'm going to try to hire a bunch of other coaches, everyone's going to laugh at me, use me for a raise, and before I can fire my la- hire my last coach, and we still don't know if Mike Leach is Tennessee's coach or not, or if their agreement would mean anything if he is Tennessee's coach, because it was done by an athletic director who was just fired. It has only been shame after shame, and the only reason we were talking about the Tennessee program in the last 10 years is because of this. The the reports after the meeting uh, between Tennessee and Leach was that a deal wasn't close to happening, so maybe just the news of him taking a meeting with Mike Leach was the straw that broke the camel's back. It's a leadership breach, man, to lose uh, a guy after one year. But speaking of leadership breaches, Mike Ryan has a real problem on his hands with Stu Gatz what? and these 30 for 30s. Uh, Stu Gatz has a star vehicle. Everyone loves the 30 for 30s. But the last one was the first one that wasn't. We were batting 1,000 on the 30 for 30s. Right. And the last one was the only one that was a little bit weak. And the reason it was weak is because Stu Gatz rushed it into, rushed it onto the air. I did, yeah, I did. Yeah, um, around bypassing Mike Ryan. I didn't get I, to listen to it before it went on the air. Right. I don't even think I told Mike Ryan about it. I just started sending Billy Gill some lines. That's it, Guillermo. I started sending him lines, which I do often because, you know, Mike rejects a lot of my ideas, and when he does so, I go around his back. So, uh, all right, do we have a new 30 for 30? Has this one been sanctioned? How does this one work? I've approved this one. You've approved this one. All right, so just so you know, this has been... Look, man, you guys know Stugatz at this point. If he can't get it the right way, he'll get it the wrong way. And sometimes (laughs) he won't even look for the right way. Sometimes the wrong way is the route he wants to go because the important part of that sentence is he wants to get it. What happens after that doesn't matter. Yeah. The, the, the most, wrong way is the easier path many for, times. For, for most people, for most people, survival is the greatest and strongest instinct. Stugatz could try to be in a situation where he was dying. Survival would finish second place to him trying to get a deal done that <laughs> favors him <laughs> right before that death. Like, let's just say you were under a train track, okay? Right, let's yes. say the train had uh, spilled, you were stuck up to your neck, and lima beans were filling a very small compartment where your face is. There's very little oxygen left. In those moments, you will not be trying to dig out. In those moments, you will make one final cell phone call to try and get something on ESPN <laughs> that brings you fame and glory. <laughs> now to the good stuff. <laughs> I can't deny that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to play Stugatz's <laughs> newest 30 for 30 next because he's doing it way too much, way too much, and he's uh, circumventing all the protocols around here, all the breaches in order to get them done. Every story, I mean, big, little, doesn't matter. I try to produce yes. a 30 for 30. You, you have 30 had minutes. about 1,000 30 for 30 ideas in the last week, all of them bad. And all of them that you've tried to get on the air around Mike when Mike's not looking, when when Mike's taking a call. I want to do one on this guy, John Curry. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Everything that happens in sports, Stugatz wants to immediately do the star vehicle that brings him more laughter, more attention, more glory, and more praise. Don Lebatard. Texture writes in, does Rob Ryan chew his food? No. He swallows pizza whole. He, he eats pizza like a pelican. Stugatz. The way that Rob Ryan eats pizza is he goes down and he grabs the crust with his mouth and then he flips it up in the air to himself and then swallows the piece of pizza whole <laughs> without any chewing and just sort of wiggles his head and neck around so that it slides down 
the eating pipe. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Lebatard Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Guest on the Dan Lebatard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Live. Here's your Sports Center update. Tiger Woods returned to competitive golf yesterday. Saw him score a nice three under par 69 in the first round of the Hero World Challenge. It was his first score in the 60s since playing in this tournament a year ago and left him just three strokes behind tournament leader Tommy Fleetwood and in a tie for eighth. Tennessee has parted ways with athletic director John Curry. And finally, Conor McGregor is now apparently a target of the Irish Mafia. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Cameron, put it on the poll. Are you interested in seeing where this goes with Conor McGregor and the Irish Mafia? <laughs> and also put on the poll, please, at Levitard Show, what's more surprising? Stugatz falling asleep during Book of Mormon, Dan falling asleep during Phantom of the Opera, Mike falling asleep during O. <laughs> o and Book of Mormon are really good. I don't know about Phantom of the Opera. I slept through it. It might have been. I see. It. It's all right. All right. So... I wonder what you do before we get to this 30 for 30. What the hell do you do if you've got Washington quarterback situations? Do guys like you, Kirk Cousins has three straight seasons with 20 plus touchdowns, but he never wins a game that is important. Like it, and I don't like doing the measurements based on winning, but the guy is just good enough to have you never beat anyone who matters. Right. It was odd to hear Collinsworth rave about Kirk Cousins and his play last night while they were getting beaten, you know, 38 to 14. Like he was raving about him, his play last night, and him as a quarterback. Man, there are not many good quarterbacks in the NFL. There are not many guys who are good at doing this. I feel like he's pretty good at doing this. $34 million a year, pretty good? Yeah. No. Dan, someone's going to give it to him. I don't think so. No, I, I don't, I don't think that someone's going to give him. $34 $34 million a year. I think Washington has sort of handled this. They've kicked this can down the road. You've seen Washington has been saying, we're going to take these last five games to evaluate him, as if you don't already know what Kirk Cousins is. You're going to base it on these last five games, is a report from the NFL Network on Kirk Cousins. Uh, and the $34 million figure a year, That's he's not going to get that from somebody. He's going to get a big contract from somebody. He's Maybe not, not gonna, that, he's but he's not going to get, get right. No, the $34 million is because they franchised him twice, and if they do it again, they got to give him $34 million for next year. Or, you know, I, or I don't know how exactly the machinations work, but Washington would be the only team that would have to pay him $34 million for next year. No other team would have to pay him that. Okay, that's fair, and that's fine, but someone's going to believe in him and give him a massive contract for many, many years. Well, actually, I mean, Dan, it's the last three years, it's 29 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 25 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, this year 21-8. and eight. I mean, that's pretty good. Yes, it is. And there's not a lot of guys who are good at this. Um, Do you want him? You're a Jets fan. Do you want him? He'd be the best quarterback. I'd be more excited for him as my quarterback than any quarterback we've ever had. So, yes, I would want him. But, Dan, think about who my quarterbacks have been. Like, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm a Jet fan. Of course I would want Kirk Cousins. All right, put it on the poll, Gamera. Would you be excited if Kirk Cousins was coming to your team? Mike, you're a Browns fan. You're in a similar situation as me. Nope. You wouldn't want Kirk? Nope. Really? Not falling for this. I mean, it's just, it's such a bandage to God's heat. What are you winning? You're... Well, Dan, who's he playing with? Like, to me, the only way Kirk Cousins gets you close is if it's Jacksonville or, like, if you're a place like Denver where you just need someone who's more competent than incompetence. Those are the situation where it works. I've been doing a lot of losing as a Browns fan for a long time, and the light at the end of the tunnel better not be Kirk Cousins. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that is totally Stugat short-sightedness when it comes to his team and just wanting names. Because he would want Kirk Cousins as the Jets quarterback. And you know what you'd be when you got him? Washington. Maybe. No, uh, not but, maybe. Look at the look at the Jets skill guys, too. Right. right they're, now, not, they're not very good. You're right. But right now, you'd be Washington in a weaker conference. And Washington in a weaker conference is certainly a playoff team. Well, there you go. You're Not only would you be Washington in a weaker conference, but you'd be Washington in a, in a harder division, right? Because the Patriots are atop it. It's not actually a harder yeah. division. Uh, the Washington's division is harder, but you're not going to beat the Patriots because nobody. You're not going to beat the Patriots with the Jets and Kirk Cousins as your quarterback. Yeah, you're a wild card as long as twelve is taken snaps for New England. I'll take a wild card. Seventy-five touchdowns, thirty-one interceptions over you know basically three seasons. I'll take it. Okay, 
Um, I mean, but but you see my quarterback play. <laughs> well, but you're you're only now you're getting to eight and eight. Congratulations. Are you getting to seven and nine? Did they make the playoffs one year with Kirk? They did. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. So guts. I don't believe he's got it. Last I checked, he might. This might have changed since, but he doesn't have many wins against teams with a winning record. Wait, did they? I know that they sort of had a playoff game against Green Bay, right? Was that a, was that Kirk Cousins? Has he, Kirk Cousins played in a playoff game? We don't even know. We don't. It's so memorable that we don't even know for sure. They didn't make it last year. All right, now Stugatz is Stugatz is doing this the way that he does, which is say something and then they, check to see if it's right. They won the NFC East uh, two years ago. Ah, there you go. At nine and seven. And how'd they do? <laughs> <laughs> Nine and seven. Yeah, and it's, how that? Wait game? a minute. Was that that wasn't RG three? Was it? <laughs> that wasn't the last time they were in a no. That was game. Kirk Cousins that, that was, was against <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> that was that was Kirk Cousins uh, two years ago. Uh, how they do in the playoff game? Oh, uh, they let lost. Me, let it doesn't there. matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but we, did they we, lose by a lot? We don't have. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. They lost thirty five eighteen to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> That guy. All right, let's go ahead and uh, Dante Jones is going to join us in 20 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and play this 30 for 30 that Stu Gatz has rushed into uh, onto air because Stu Gatz has bypassed and breached every like he is like the born authority of scam. Like he breaches. It's like watching Ocean's Eleven to see Stu Gatz, a one man scam team, just get his stuff on the air. What if I told you that some good ideas run their course that everything that happens isn't worthy of a movie trailer that I don't actually believe that and that I'm being forced to read this that at least five times a week I send a text to Mike Ryan suggesting a 30 for 30 that I tell him a lot of people on Twitter are suggesting it that early on, everyone was on board with this. That now, Mike usually tells me, it's not a good idea, and we do too many of these. <laughs> that Dan ignores the text completely. That I go behind Mike's back and send Guillermo two lines and tell him, we need it done by tomorrow. That he usually falls for. It. <laughs> that if I'm being completely honest, no one suggested any of these on Twitter. <laughs> that I can tell Guillermo just about anything and he'll do it for me because he's a sucker. <laughs> that I think we should actually be doing more of these. <laughs> That if a limited 30-part documentary series is by their 96th movie, I think we still have a ways to go before we run this bit into the ground. <laughs> that everyone else disagrees with me. ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 about how we once again killed a decent bit by doing it too often. Yeah. It's an eternal affliction. It's our Achilles heel as a show. Good job. Money bro. in the bank. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. Another one on Monday. Bro. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the poll. Are we doing too many 30 for 30 spoofs? <laughs> Don Lebertard. Stugatz listens very poorly. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure he was listening right there. I wasn't. Stugatz. He makes sounds like that to disguise when he's not listening. He's mm -hmm. got an assortment of we of weaponry yep. in the case for sounds. That <laughs> he's making them all right now. All the sounds that he makes when he's not listening. Hmm. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. We'll find out in 15 minutes if Coach K ran through a locker room with a burning spear. I don't know if we'll find out because you guys don't believe it, but we'll ask the guy who tells that story follow-up questions to make sure that story is real. I saw on Twitter there was someone else uh, who was with the Duke program uh, at the time, and he says that Dante Jones might be embellishing some of the things uh -oh. that he mentions in the story. Mm -hmm. We can't name that person on, on air? I don't remember their name. Hang on. Okay. Right. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. 
Get in touch with the show anytime to the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Levitard Show at Stugat790. Ring in the holiday season with bouquets for your friends and loved ones from 1-800-Flowers.com. When you order a dozen assorted roses for just twenty nine ninety nine, you get an extra bouquet for free. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. So this one's interesting, Stugatz. I didn't think I'd live long enough to see it. But in football, the good old boy network, has worked its magic to help get a black man, Herm Edwards, a really confusing Arizona State job because he's just got a couple of friends in power there. And so they've hired the 63-year-old Herm Edwards, 2-23 and in his last 25 games as the Kansas City Chiefs coach, last seen making, uh, you know, being a very electric personality on television, so electric that I thought his coaching days were over because no one can coach after behaving that way on television, usually. <laughs> like, I thought, I just thought that his coaching days were over because you can't be right that that guy on television, like, wearing costumes and stuff and then go back to serious land, usually. You sure. can't. No. Um, but, but he's the, doing it. And I actually think, I, I, you know, I hear what you're saying about his, his final 25 games or so in the NFL. I happen to think he'll be good at the college level. Oh, I don't, I don't. Like rah, rah okay. guy. Yes, you yes. Trust he's, him. Yes, he's very, yes. he's very trustworthy. He's yes. noble. He's an excellent man. He is a, a, a leader that yes. people want to follow. He motivates, uh, he motivates very well, but that's not even what I'm talking about. I don't want to argue about whether or not he's going to have success there. We'll all find out soon enough, even though in our lifetime, in our lifetimes, Arizona State hasn't had any national relevance, right? What's something Arizona State has done in football at any point that you remember? Hmm. Is it Jake the Snake playing there? Did he play there or did he play? He played out west somewhere. No, he did. He played there. Vontae's perfect uh, pointing at Matt Barkley um, as he was about to snap the ball, looking like he was going to kill him legitimately. That's the last thing I remember. But I mean, so I don't want to argue about whether he'll be successful. Not I don't know whether sixty. He's his energy is great. He's sixty three years old. Uh, he just doesn't have any experience, re- you know, coaching and recruiting and doing some of the things that you you need to do in college that aren't you know the NFL job. But the the more interesting part I wanted to talk about is just the idea of the way people get hired. Right. Like, isn't one of the guys in this in the search? One of them was his former agent. And the other one is a longtime friend who is also a black guy, right? The, the good old boy network usually doesn't work in the favor. Like, that's how hires have been made in this country and in this sport for a very long time. But 2017 is the rare instance when you, the good old boy network ends up favoring the black guy. Because this is, this is a, this is an unusual hire, right? And again, I need to preface this on the front end, all right, by saying, Herm Edwards' credentials are such that if you bring him to something that's a nowhere program, that's a good thing. Right. Okay? But I'm just talking in general about the reason this got the reason this happened is because Herm Edwards has friends in high places that have real connections with him and that he believes in them and they believe in him and it fits right. It feels right to him. The vice president of university athletics, Ray Anderson, at Arizona State, they know each other. They're friends. Well, no, trust but, them. No, right. but there are two guys involved. One of them is a very close friend and the other guy, I believe, used to be Herm's agent. And so that's... But that's how this stuff happens. That's how Herm Edwards usually doesn't get his shot. That's why the Rooney rule is in place. So that stuff doesn't happen to black people. But this is one of the few times that you will see something that happened there. That's something happening to white people. Because Herm Edwards might be the most qualified candidate, but that fell out of the sky. Herm Edwards to Arizona State. And the reason nobody saw it coming and the reason it happened is because Herm Edwards has very strong relationships with these people, relationships that have been earned through a lifetime of good service. And that's how that happens in college sports, throughout college sports. But when you have so many white people in charge, that's when you get the need for the Rooney rule because that stuff can't be happening all the time with all the white people being in charge, and it rarely happens for black people. You almost have to force it. The, the NFL has felt the need and put the Rooney name on it. They felt the need to force this upon their league because of how often this kind of thing was happening. If you're Herm, do you call Tennessee? Just now? He's already going to renegotiate strong, strong his arm is, Strong arm is friends? Yes. Strong arm is friends? Yes, yes. 
<laughs> I mean, Herm, if you're listening out there, just a little advice. I would probably call, I think Philip Fulmer is now in charge of the search, which is just laugh out loud funny. But, Herm, I would call Philip. Why is it funny that their last champion coach and the last time Tennessee football mattered <laughs> heading the search would be funny to look for a new coach? Any funnier than what's already happened? The guy, the AD that was there lasted eight months and created nothing but dumpster fires? I mean, look at Philip Fulmer. Oh, that's it? Just look at him. Okay, so that's it. I had no idea he was still associated with the university. Okay. And look at him. All right, there you go. Stugatz waving his ignorance around.